Gaddafi and personally promised to provide him with military weapons. On Friday of last week, President Obama announced that all American military personnel in Iraq, except for about 100 who provide security for our Vatican-sized embassy in Baghdad, will all be home before Christmas. Do you remember why we have had any personnel there? Well, first it was to seek out and destroy weapons of mass destruction, but none were found. Then we got involved in a civil war and took sides with the group that had been excluded from the government. Then we were told that our purpose was regime change because Saddam Hussein was a bad guy, whether he had WMDs or not. Then we captured Saddam and he was tried in a kangaroo court and executed. We lost 4,500 young soldiers. 32,000 more were injured. 650,000 Iraqis were killed. And over 2 million Iraqis fled their country. This, along with our adventurism in Afghanistan, cost the American taxpayers about $1 trillion. The stated purpose for our departure is the decision of the popularly elected Iraqi government to decline to afford immunity to American personnel. Stated differently, the Iraqi government, which we installed, decided that after all these years there, Americans in Iraq needed to obey the same laws as Iraqis do. That was too much for us, and so we will leave. And on Saturday of this last week, Afghan President Hamid Karzai, a frequent guest of the in the United States of President George W. Bush, who once addressed a joint session of Congress and whose country the United States took back from the Taliban, announced that should the United States engage in a military conflict with Pakistan, his government will side with the Pakistanis. This would mean that over 100,000 U.S. troops would be kicked out of Afghanistan. We would lose all our military hardware or... We would need to fight against the forces of the country we have supposedly liberated and whose military we have trained and which we have occupied for 10 years. Indeed, this war in Afghanistan has been the longest in American history. It has cost us 2,700 young lives, 3,400 casualties, produced 3.5 million refugees. And because the government doesn't break down these numbers for us to see, it consumed part of the trillion dollars we have spent in fighting these two useless wars in the Middle East. Your government, you see, has few lasting friendships, but many, many lasting interests. After the deaths of 7,000 young Americans and injuries to another 40,000, after 5 million persons have fled their homelands, after hundreds of billions of dollars in property damage, we are still saddled with a trillion dollar cost because we borrowed the money to pay for these wars and we have yet to pay it back. We are leaving Iraq and Afghanistan wants us out and Libya has already enacted Sharia law, which means polygamy and the stoning of women who disobey their husbands. Now tell me, do you feel safer or freer because of all of this? Of course not. We are all less free because an entire generation of Middle Eastern young people has come of age resenting and hating the United States government. And an entire generation of Americans has come of age saddled with an additional trillion dollars in government debt because we were there, because we bombed and killed and maimed and installed puppet, re puppet regimes, and soon we will leave. Did we learn the lessons of our own failures in Vietnam? No. Did we learn the lessons of the Russians' failures in Afghanistan? No. Is it any wonder we have an economy that is collapsing here at home and the most unsettled time in America in the last 80 years? No. From New York, defending...